Welcome back to It's Personal, brought to you by Gutterson Health System. I'm Christopher. Well, there's a new report out, really a new study, that talks about dementia being impacted by exercise and impacted in a positive way, meaning maybe less symptoms of dementia. Joining us to talk more about this study and about uh, exercise in general is Shana Schertz, wellness education specialist from Gunderson Health System. Thanks for joining us, Shana. Thanks for having me. So dementia um, is certainly one of those scary things as people grow older. Many people know uh, individuals who are dealing with dementia. So this was some good news to say that exercise might have a positive impact. Right. So as you said, dementia is really becoming more and more prevalent. One person is diagnosed with uh, dementia in the United States every four seconds. And not only are more people being diagnosed, but they're being diagnosed at a much younger age. So anything that we can do to help um, those in that situation is great and this study really hits on exercise being really beneficial not only for those that have already developed dementia but also for those that haven't um, in preventing dementia i still like to think of myself as a young person so you're saying exercise at any age is going to be a good idea which makes sense from a physical standpoint but we're talking about the brain What's the impact here? What do you what do you believe this study is showing here and the impact? Well, as we exercise, chemicals in our body in in our brain change. And with those changes in chemicals really, um, it it helps our brain with memory, with problem solving, and which can all help memory in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um, So we've often heard keeping our brain healthy through um, different exercises, more mental-based exercises. That is also beneficial, but more so now they're talking about physical um, exercise being really beneficial for our brains and for our bodies. I'm going to throw you a little curveball here, but you know, you've heard of this thing uh, called a runner's high, where a runner mm-hmm. will go out and run five miles and then afterwards sort of feel this like euphoria. Um, and this seems to kind of go right along the lines of something similar to say, you know, maybe that exercise or getting that, you know, high level of exercise is just simply good for us all over. Right. And, and really, I think something to keep in mind is it does not have to be a prolonged, intense exercise, though, either. It can be um, short bouts of movement and just staying active. I think one of the things that the study had really hit on was it doesn't need to be intense exercise, just movement, because that's what they tracked on these participants was their everyday movement rather than were you active for 60 minutes that day or were you active all day long. So I think those short parts, bouts of exercise can be just as beneficial. Yeah, I want to dive into that a little bit because I think people get confused about what that means. So when you say movement, you're not saying go outside and go for a walk or hit the treadmill for 30 minutes, although both of those can be positives. You're saying that sometimes just getting up and cleaning the house or vacuuming or moving around um, is going to be also uh, a form of exercise. Um, I know that has been pointed out in the Minutes in Motion program that's been put on by Gunderson Health System for many years, but staying active can be much more simple than people think. Yes. What I always tell people is find something you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, you won't stick with it. So if you do enjoy, say, running on a treadmill and being that being your activity. I'm not sure there's anybody out there that enjoys running on a treadmill. (laughs) Maybe you. (laughs) Okay. Um, I found the one person, folks. Or if you enjoy swimming, whatever you like to do. But if you are just someone that really doesn't like to be active and you just enjoy nothing about it, that's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. Um, Take those opportunities such as cleaning the house, Mm -hmm. going out and shopping. Shopping is a really good form of exercise. You're constantly moving, especially if you're trying clothes on and whatnot. Um, Shopping, doing yard work, um, all of those things, just staying on your feet rather than sitting. I always tell people, any time you're up off the couch is good. Mm-hmm. So any type of movement throughout your day, just staying busy and active, because think about it. If you are active and you go to the gym 60 minutes a day and then you're sitting the rest of the day, right. you probably are not as active as somebody who is just 
doesn't go to the gym, but is staying on their feet most of the day. That's a great point. Shana Schertz, wellness education specialist here at Gunderson Health System, talking about the importance of exercise and how it can maybe even delay some symptoms of, uh, of dementia and has certainly many other positive benefits. Uh, I happen to know personally um, of a, a grandmother, 70 years old, and she volunteers to go to her children's homes and clean them once every other week and she says it's the best exercise that she can get she has to go up and down stairs and she does you know lots of and it's certainly (laughs) helpful to her children but she also as you said loves to clean so it seems like she found her you know perfect opportunity to exercise without and also helping people at the same time that's kind of cool right and so she's not only helping her physical health by being active but she might not even know that she's helping her brain health and her memory by just staying active and and um helping others by cleaning their house. One of the challenges I think sometimes, Shana, is just getting people started. What's your advice for somebody who's saying, you know, it's, I'm kind of in my, I'm in my routine. I, I, you know, like to drink my coffee and watch TV in the morning and that leads into next thing you know, I've watched TV for four. How do you change that mindset? So a couple of things. One I always say is, what is your why? Why do you want to be active? And if you really don't have a why, think about your family history. Is there a history of heart disease? Do you want to grow old to watch your grandkids um, grow and be healthy to be active with them? Um, So just any time you're trying to choose a new activity, thinking of your why, and then also setting goals, but not setting them too lofty. So say you want to exercise 60 minutes a day, is that kind of setting the bar high if you right now don't do any, any activity? Yeah. So maybe it's, I'm going to be active 10 minutes today. And mm-hmm. you start small and you build from there. And you will start probably to see the benefits even after setting that initial goal for 10 10 minutes a day. I've heard of some people um, who would love to just sit and watch, for example, a football game, plenty of football games on this time of the year, that's for sure. But um, that they've started recording those and it's shortened up their time span for you know watching the game. Uh, and then if the game, by the way, was bad, they would certainly <laughs> have more time or ability to shut it off if the game was a blowout. Um, so there are other ideas. And you said short-term goals, I think, um, is also a key thing because many people say, well, I want to lose weight or I want to um, you know, look good for the wedding. But saying, what am I doing today or what am I doing now is really kind of the key message for a lot of us. Yeah, so just taking it really hour by hour throughout your day. If your goal is to eat healthy, then every time there's a meal time, every time there's a snack time, remember your goal. And if you get off track with the holidays, with maybe you have a birthday party, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up because the stress you're putting on your body, if you make up by just beating yourself up, if you make a poor decision, it's probably worse than if you were just to move on in the next meal, you eat healthy again and you start incorporating those healthy um, habits into your life again. Maybe that's one of the things we should ask about too because sometimes you know that you have that birthday party in the evening and there's gonna be cake and there's gonna be pizza and there's gonna be lots of different opportunities to overindulge, that kind of thing. So is it a good idea to save your calories or is it a better idea to maybe find smaller things to eat throughout the day? A lot of people will do that. They'll say, I'm not going to eat in the morning because I have this party in the afternoon, which then leads them to overeat at the party because they are starving by the time they get there. I saved my calories, Shana. I saved my calories. Exactly. So I say just do your normal routine. Have a healthy breakfast, lunch. And when you get to the party, choose what you enjoy. If you enjoy that cake, great. Just choose a smaller piece and really savor and enjoy it. I mean, that's what these celebrations are all about. It's okay to treat yourself, but then also having those healthy foods as other sides um, at the party would be good too. But treat yourself, really. Uh, One small piece of cake is not going to, one small piece of cake a week is not going to Ruin everything, yeah, Exactly. Right? And then help clean up afterwards and go for a walk, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, Shana, we're out of time, but thanks for joining us and talking to us more about the importance of exercise for both the mind and certainly the body as well. All right, Shana Schertz, a wellness education specialist at Gunderson Health System.